This is one of my favorite things to eat when it's warm out. It is not quick, but it is cheap and stupid easy. Starts with possibly the easiest homemade pickles. Get yourself one or two pounds of any vegetables that you'd like and slice them thin. I'm starting with a small purple cabbage. Just cut it in half and wedge out the core. Cut the halves in half and then start slicing. Without the core holding them together, the leaves should fall apart into individual strips. You don't have to use purple cabbage for this, but I'd recommend a cabbage of some kind, and also some form of onion. I'll keep going with the purple theme. And here is my secret for peeling onions. I cut them in half, and then rather than sacrifice minutes of my life trying to scrape that skin off of the outermost layer, I just sacrifice the outermost layer. Call it wasteful, call it lazy, I call it setting priorities. Get those thinly sliced, and then for a little texture and color variety, I'm going to use a very large carrot. It does not have to be tissue paper thin. If you don't feel like doing a bunch of slicing, just get yourself this, a bag of prepared coleslaw mix. I'd maybe augment it with an onion that I sliced myself, but I have absolutely made pickles out of pre-cut slaw, and honestly, it's just as good. Today I'll use my pile of purple. Get yourself a large bowl. This is stainless steel, not aluminum. Vinegar will cause aluminum to leach into food. I'm talking about an entire 12 ounce bottle of rice wine vinegar. I freaking love this stuff. It's really mild, so you don't have to cook it to boil off that harsh ammonia-like note that other vinegars have. Throw in a half cup of sugar and a pinch of salt, and that is literally it. No boiling and cooling it back down again. Just stir it up. The sugar might not seem like it's going to dissolve. Don't worry, it will once it mixes with all of the water inside our vegetables. Sugar pulls water out of cells via osmosis, just like salt does. That's why it's traditionally used in all kinds of preserves, including sweet pickles. It also tastes great. Sweet and sour. There's no better combination on earth. Don't think that your veggies have to be submerged in the pickling liquid. They just need to be coated. Now, these are not the kind of pickles that you can put in a jar in the basement. We didn't sterilize our instruments or anything. These have to stay in the fridge. They'll taste pretty good after a few hours in there. Here they are the morning after. Look at how much water's come out of them. It's good to stir them once a day. These would be good now, but man, give them a few days or a week in the fridge and they will blow your mind. Here they are after five days. Still crunchy, but with intense sweet and sour flavor. Try those on tacos, they will change your life. But today I'm putting them on this, a five pound piece of pork shoulder. Did I mention this recipe is incredibly cheap in addition to being easy? Start by preheating your oven to 325 Fahrenheit and setting a burner to medium high heat underneath an oven safe pot that is ideally just wide enough to hold the meat. I'll show you why in a second. Salt the meat liberally. Add a little olive oil in the pot and then brown the meat well on all sides. While it's going, chop up a few cloves of garlic. Flip it over and ah, that could have gone better. Here is why I like using a small pot, or at least a narrow pot, for braising any single large piece of meat. Look at how little extra surface area there is here. The more empty space there is on the bottom of the pan, the more likely stuff is to burn on there while we're browning the meat. Throw in your garlic and then about a tablespoon of cumin and a tablespoon of dried oregano. That'll get you a, a vaguely Cuban flavor. And then enough water to come maybe halfway up the pork. Okmogi Brew Pub in Macon, Georgia. You should go. Grind in some pepper and then put the lid on the pot. You could reduce the heat to a simmer and just cook it on the stovetop, but I like to braise it in the oven. It cooks quicker and it'll get some additional browning in there. Check it after it's been in for a couple hours. I'm just making sure that the liquid hasn't all evaporated. If it does, the meat could burn, but 325 is a pretty safe temperature. I'm gonna flip the meat around just so that all sides cook evenly. And then I'm gonna test it to see how much longer it needs. We want this to be soft. This is soft, but you can see that I can't really pull the meat off the bone yet. Better give it another hour. So here it is after three hours total in the oven. And look, you can pull the meat right off the bone. It could still be softer. You might want it softer, but I think it tastes like cat food when it gets too soft. Pull the pork onto a plate and then check out this braising liquid. We're gonna reduce this down to a glaze for the pork, but there's a big layer of rendered fat on top. If you don't wanna eat that, you could get rid of it by using the greatest gravy separator of all time. That could have gone better. 
All right, you see how that fat has risen to the top because it's less dense? Now you just hold this thing over the pot and squeeze the handle to open up a valve that's on the bottom. All of the broth drains out of the bottom and you just let go before the fat goes through. I love this thing, but taking the fat out is optional. Now we just boil this down, stirring occasionally. You can actually hear when it's almost done. It'll get syrupy and the bubbles will start piling on top of each other. It makes a very different sound when that happens. Now it's really thick and intense. Get your pork shoulder. This has had some time to cool down, so you should be able to pull off all of the meat with your hands and just throw it in the pot. Okay, it's still a little too hot. If you come across any big pieces of fat or anything else that you don't want to eat, just don't put it in. Now get a couple of forks and pull these chunks apart as much as you want. I don't like to completely shred it. I like some big chunks. Toss everything around in that glaze and then eat a piece just to check for seasoning. A little more salt. You want this to be a little too salty by itself because there's not much salt in the pickles and you want them to balance each other out. This makes a lot of food and it's so easy to serve, which makes it perfect for having friends over in the summertime. Just pile some meat on a plate, get your pickles out and drop a big pile on the pork. I tear some cilantro leaves on top and then spoon a little bit of that sweet pickle juice over the plate. You could have this with some rice on the side if you wanted a starch, but I like to eat it just like this. Love that contrast of the soft, fatty meat with the bright, crunchy pickles. Sweet, sour, and salty. It's one of Lauren's favorites, too. It's delicious. <laughs> it's so good. The pickles are the best part. <laughs>